So I'm here with uh, Professor Anne Gaucaire, a good friend of mine. She's in the chemistry program, but she also um, has been a longstanding participant in a study abroad program in her native France that combines chemistry and art, which I've always found fascinating. So she seemed the perfect person to talk about a, the curious history of a uh, red dye called carmine or carmine. Tell us a little bit about where that comes from, Anne. Yeah, so the, the, the red dye called carmine was imported by, by the Spanish from, from Mexico. So you, you have to remember that at the time, the red color was very difficult to, to obtain. Uh, mm -hmm. And either it was difficult to extract uh, in Europe, or the color that you would get would not be a beautiful red. It would be more like an orange uh, color. Mm -hmm. So whenever the Spanish went to Mexico and found that they had that beautiful, vibrant red color, they decided to import it back um, to, to Europe. And after that, it was used widely um, as a, a textile dye uh, to, to obtain that beautiful red color, but also as a leaked pigment. When you take the dye and you actually make it into a precipitate with different salts, especially aluminum uh, salts, and then you can paint with it. So it's been widely, widely used. Yeah, throughout the art world. So throughout the art world, yeah. That so far it doesn't seem like there's much of a curious history to that. Like where where's the intrigue with with this carmine? Well, it was the third largest import uh, from Mexico for the for the Spanish. So of course it created envy from other countries. Uh, pirates too, who try to to seize the the precious cargo, uh, and then and then you had also uh, the Dutch, the French, and the British would send spies to try to smuggle that that dye. Uh, the scientists in Europe didn't even know what it was made of. Well, what is this grain? It was called the grain. Mm. What is this? Is it is it a worm? Is it is it a berry? I mean, you have to think about you know in the 1600. People didn't think anything could be wrong with blurring the lines between the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. So at some point, people called it a, a worm berry, which means it's a berry that then becomes a worm. When oh it my gosh. Kill. And people Crazy. believe this, right? A worm berry. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so which is it? Is it a worm or a berry or is it neither? So it's neither. It's a, it's a cochineal. It's a female insect um, that lives on the nopal cactus and uh, it's wingless. So it spends it, its entire life there and it produces carminic acid, which is that red dye. And that is supposed to be bitter to uh, animals like birds, to the predators. So it's a deterrent mm. to, to those predators. And you just take the dried up bug and you crush it and you get the red color, beautiful red color. That's great. So is this, is this color, I mean, are we still eating ground up bugs in our food? Well, it, it depends. <laughs> if you like natural stuff, maybe uh, you, you are eating that, that bug. Um, so if, you, if you're into red food, like strawberry yogurt, red candies, red velvet cake, or cosmetics, uh, anything that is either pink or, or red might have that natural red dye. And you'll find it on the food label, uh, either as natural red four. Uh, you can also find it as carmine. You can find it sometimes even written up as cochineal. So wow. yeah, it's, it's all good. It's natural, right? Right, right. Now, what about in the painting world, in the art world? Is that dye, is that dye still used? No, we, we now use uh, dyes like alizarin. So we have the red dyes that are widely available and that are not so light sensitive. One mm. of the issues with the cochineal, with the carminic acid, is that uh, it can fade away over time. Mm. So that, that's one of the, the major concerns. So now we have, chemists have found ways of creating new red dyes that uh, can, can stay for centuries according to our studies. So we, we don't need this anymore mm. in, for, for dyes, for textile dyes or even pigments. Well, good news for us and good news for the cochineal, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Anne. I appreciate it. Bye.